Welcome to the Yo Brother Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Smith. Alongside me, as always, is my brother from the same mother, Mike Smith. Hey, Mike. How, how goes it today, Dan? Going good, man. Good. Excited to get this one going. It is, what are we, June 7th, 2020? June 7th, or yeah, it's starting to warm up, you know. Yeah, you're uh, up there in the cold northeast. I'm down here in central Florida. Yeah, you're headed for the uh, humidity wave. Yeah, we've had a lot of heavy storms and a lot of rain. You know, this is typically, like July has always typically been kind of the rainy season start, but man, it started early down here. It's some major thunderstorms recently, so. Really? Yeah. Already? Yeah. yeah. Tornadoes touched down yesterday, and it's kind of been a wild uh, week or two. It's tough. So here we are. We are talking about Disney Pixar's movie Onward today. And the latest, the latest uh, reveal from Pixar. Yeah, the latest, the latest one from Pixar. And you know, this film was released a few months back, March sixth, I think, was the actual date. Mm-hmm. And of course, as as most people know, uh, it only lasted about two weeks in the theater because then, of course, the coronavirus pandemic happened. And and really shut everything down. <laughs> it kind of shut the world down pretty much. Yeah, this the movie still managed to eke out a hundred million at the box office, but I think that it, you know that was about half what it cost to make the movie. And this was a big release for them. So it was it was tough to lose all that box office time. Yeah, it's a shame. I, I thought about that as I was watching the movie. And of course, we'll get into kind of our breakdown of it. But, you know, how much would it have done in that opening weekend or just within that two weeks or, you know, I, 100, yeah. like you said, still respectable. But, you know, for a Pixar right. film, you, you'd think that they'd be taking home a lot more than that. So, you know, of course, then it got released you know, digitally. And uh, I don't know about you. I watched it on Disney plus. Is that how you watched it? That's how I watched it too. Although I do have the Blu-ray, but I didn't crack it open because it's a collector's thing. Okay. So I didn't crack it open. So I know how you are with those, keeping those seals tight. Yeah. Which is really (laughs) stupid. (laughs) I I don't know why I I do do the same thing. I have, I don't know, at least a dozen or more movies that haven't even been unopened. And the or and, opened, and rather. And the thing about Disney Plus is, yeah, they gave it to us. It came out on Disney Plus before the Blu-ray release, which is, you know, kind of backwards. And the thing about that is uh, normally the movies on Disney Plus have the extras. And this one does not have any extras. That's, so, that's right. Yeah, I really need to crack that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I did look at that and you know, it's a little bit of a, it's misleading because on the Disney plus menu, right. You see extras, you but see extras. it's just the trailer. Exactly. So that's kind of a bummer. Although I did watch a lot of um, YouTube clips with uh, primarily with, with Tom Holland and Chris Pratt. And again, we can talk about that in, in a little bit, but um, you know, I, cause I was sort of hungry to, to, to see more about the film. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, if I'm you, I'm gonna. That's one. I'm gonna go ahead and slip off that cellophane and crack that yeah. open. You know. Yeah. Now, of course, I notice. No, I. Well, I was just gonna say I notice. Not that I go to the store a lot because we're still. Well, we just we're lifting lockdown tomorrow, and for those of those for people listening, we're you know we're in this pandemic. So movies are great right now, but not the theater. We can't go to the theater, which is probably the longest time you've been out of the theater in a in a while. Yeah, and you know, they're actually starting to open down here, but I'm not ready to go to the theaters at this point personally. Yeah. You know. And we also have these protests going on right now. And uh, mm-hmm. there's just a lot of 
Yeah, a lot so of it's people a, in the streets. It's a good time for escape, like you said. You know, it's a great time to watch movies. Yeah, it's a good time to watch movies. So this movie, of course, was directed by Dan Scanlon, who mm-hmm. you know has has a few other credits to his name with Pixar films, Monsters University, right? Right, right. And you know, I I didn't realize until I guess after the film that. You know, he sort of took the germ of the idea coming from, you know, the loss of his own father when I think he said he was like only one year old. He was very, very young. Yeah, which gets into the theme of the picture, which is uh, these, you know, it's about two brothers Mm -hmm. who lose their father. Yeah. And, you know, when I was getting ready to watch it, of course, you know, you and I lost our father just, you know, a few years back. Mm -hmm. And so, although we don't have that in common with the film, you know, like in terms of the, the one, the main character, Ian, who never got to meet his father, you know? Right. But I, but I, I did think about, I would imagine most people who have lost a, a parent at some point, uh, you know, and that father-son relationship is so unique. But I imagine that, you know, everybody who's gone through that experience has at some point experienced that moment of or had a thought about revisiting that parent, you know, or thinking about them coming back to them or something like that. I know I have, you know. That- what struck me as odd while I was watching it is in a short period of time, this is the second Pixar film to deal with death because Coco, which was a big hit, that's right, was dealing with death and you know issues surrounding death and and instead of being depressed, you should celebrate their life. So it was kind of I'm thinking you know these are kids' movies generally, although some some people don't think that, but they are I you know made towards kids. And, you know, is that a little creepy, you know, for kids? Yeah, although this, you know, uh, this does have a PG rating. I mean, right. I thought it was, I mean, I guess I, I, I get it with some of the, the content, you know, depending on the, 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 the young audience that you're talking about. And I don't think that's totally unusual for like Coco, maybe. I don't know. I have to look that up, but maybe that was the same because you said, and even that one was, that's a fantastic movie. I love Coco. Yes, uh, but I and I would say that the that that theme in that film is 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 darker. darker. Yeah, much darker yeah. than it is in this. Yeah, you know, this was very kind of with the whole fantasy and um, elf kind of world that they created. Uh, right, right. So, and that's it. The brothers are elves. Right. You which, got Barley, the older brother, and then you have Ian, the younger right. brother. Right. And they're voiced by Tom Holland, does Ian, who's, like you said, the lead character. And Chris Pratt does um, the other brother. And sorry, my I lost my headphone here for I a second. I thought they did a great job. Yeah, great, great voice. And they were perfect together. They were perfect together. And it was, um, you know, they they, I guess they did some of the work in the same room, not, not the entire yes. film, but you know, I saw some of those clips and that was pretty fun to watch them. I did too. Did you I see did that? too. Yeah. And, and they did as, you know, when you, when you do voice acting, you're kind of on this pedestal and you're talking into a mic, you're almost in a booth. You're in like a sound booth. Right. And a couple of times you'd see them break out of their booths laughing and kind of hugging each other I think they probably felt that kind of brotherly relationship and it comes off in the, in the, in the film. I guess it's no surprise. This is a trending title right now for Disney plus, or at least it was for this week. You know, I got a email notification with all the trending titles on Disney plus, And of course this was one of them. Yeah. So I watched it yesterday morning. Uh, I'm not sure about you. Did you, I, I saw it yesterday as well. Oh, you did? And okay. So it's fresh in our minds. It is. So dive in. Like, let's, let's, let's talk about it. Well, um, you know, I wanted to get your thoughts first. You know, how, how did you like it? 
What did you think? You know, for me, now I had in kind of looking up some information about it before I watched it. I saw, you know, ver- there was some variety article I came across that uh, mentioned it. It had like 17 Emmy nods. Um, it was, it was uh, Apple TV plus uh, something to do with that. But, you know, so there was the anticipation of watching it. I was pretty, and again, the theme and and how I thought we might, as two brothers, relate to this the picture as well. The thing that strikes me right from the beginning and throughout the film, uh, like so many of Pixar films, is just the animation is so stunning. Yeah. It, it's, you know, I find myself getting lost in the detail of the landscape and the scenes and I actually watched a good bit of it again this morning and right. the same thing. I just, what these animators do is just, it's incredible. Even with the technology today, you know, I mean, that just blows my mind. So I was really from the beginning, that opening scene or the opening shot, it almost reminded me of the, what is it? The TriStar films with the Pegasus right? You know, comes up there's that opening scene and you know, you've got the narrator sort of talking about the, the world of magic and all this sort of stuff, setting it up. But, but so overall that's that I found captivating because I thought the animation was fantastic. And uh, you know, again, Pratt and Holland were, were really great the way they played off each other uh, vocally. I mean, you know, yes. the rest of it, of course you're, you're relying on the animation, but um, you know, the story I thought was very sweet. Uh, I know there was some, some critical, uh, reviews to the film. Um, but you know, overall, oh, brother, I'm one of them. <laughs> are you one? Okay. Well, that's good. I, I mean, know. you know, that, that's, that's part of what makes this, yes, <laughs> this thing work. <laughs> Speaking of magic, but, but, um, you know, if, if I, and maybe when I hear some of your take on it, but, if I, there were a few little things I might have wanted them to flesh out a little bit more, but I understood that they were really trying to focus on the relationship between the brothers. Like that was clear that that's what they were really just super yeah. focused on. Instead of, there was some ancillary characters like the um, the the one the group that he approaches that Ian approaches outside the high school where he's <laughs> he's trying to figure out how to approach them and, you know, right. He's you know, shy. Hey and, gang, you know, right. And I really was intrigued by those. I think it was four characters that he's talking to. Right. And then we really never see them again in the film. Yeah. He wants to invite them to his birthday party. That's right. Yeah, exactly. But he's kind of shy about it. And then the loud, obnoxious, bigger brother Mike. shows up. You might. Oh, I mean, sorry, Barley. Yeah, Barley. <laughs> hey, <laughs> oh brother. Uh, yeah, he shows up, and then it's like he's embarrassed by him, and he's like, "No, um, I just forget the party. I was his only kid." I mean, any any uh, a- animated film with a plumber's crack in it. <laughs> yeah, it's got my yeah, they're right. They had to throw that in. That was really funny. So you know, I mean, I. I found myself at the end of the film and throughout, I thought there was some really good humor in it. Um, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, who of course voiced their mother was really funny. Yes. And I like the whole, like the call back to her doing P90 <laughs> working out in her, in the house yeah. to slaying the dragon and stuff like that. But, um, and I don't want to give too much away of, yeah. of the, of the movie. Spoiler alert. Yeah. But, Again, uh, as we like to say, we assume that you're most, listeners are saying it but yeah but um so i i wasn't uh, you know i i I would say i was content when the film was over i wasn't i didn't feel let down or disappointed i thought it was sweet and tender and funny and you know i so that's my initial take at least so let's okay turn it over to you what are your thoughts about it i yeah i did this i would put this probably if not on the bottom, pretty close to the bottom Yikes. of the Pixar, of the Pixar films. And Episode I'll tell you folks, why. It was, it was only a matter of time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Like, when it started, when the movie started, I thought, oh, geez, here's a, 
you know, some more commercials. I hate these commercials when I'm watching a DVD or a Blu-ray. But it wasn't. I'm, I'm like, why are they showing Lord of the Rings commercial here? The music and, and uh, the wizardry, I kept thinking of Harry Potter. And, and I keep, keep thinking of Lord of the Rings. I, that's what I thought was happening. And then I'm like, okay, yeah, these are elves. And, but the way they did it, I really didn't like the, the introduction. One thing I did like was the way they built up the city around the little elf houses. You know, it started off, there was just these elf houses, and then all of a sudden there's skyscrapers all around them. And I wish they had kind of tackled that, you know, the, how that changed the lives of these characters a little bit. But they really didn't. It was just there at the beginning. Mm. And then we moved on to the adventure right out of the gate because right after that scene you talked about, we're talking about the first five minutes of the movie where he, you know, was trying to invite those kids to his birthday. Right. But then they get home and Julia Louis Dreyfus is doing these calisthenics, you know, like for super mom and she's trying to hype herself up. And I agree with you. All the voice acting was fine. I, Octavia Spencer was one of the voices. She's and, great as the manticore. Yeah. They were, I liked all the voice acting. There was some gags that I think were a little, you know, just put in there for gags, but you you hit the the I was expecting a much more emotional response to this mm-hmm. and I was expecting you know this journey was going to pay off and I don't want to give away the ending but it didn't pay off mm-hmm. and you know the reality is it was about the brothers which is fine right but it, they kind of build it about the dad. And mm-hmm. I was kind of fascinated with that idea about, you know, what would you say? We never got there. Well, let's, do, uh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say right now, if I'm going to insert an actual spoiler alert so that we can, we can free ourselves up to talk more about the film without. So okay. if you have not seen this film, then you can pause this episode and then feel free to come back after you've watched the movie. But I think we need to kind of get into more of the details of, of, you know, some of the later scenes and and like you mentioned the ending and, you know, but that way I think we can do that. And we've given folks kind of a, a warning. Okay. You know, I think that's fair. All right. Because there's some things I, you know, that I would want to get talk about. Sure. You know, more details. Okay. Because you say like, you know, about the the dad. I mean, I do agree with that. I think, you know, I probably would have, I, I don't know. It was a little weird that, you know, 99% of the film was them just running around with their father's lower half. Yeah. <laughs> you know, which, because, you know, that's, but I will say though, because you mentioned it's about, is ultimately about the brothers and and, right. and that's of course correct. I really did find that uh, there was a scene that I did find emotional, which is when Ian is looking at his checklist. Yes. uh, Right. Of the things that he wanted to do with his father. And then he, then he, he, as he's going through the list, he. Thinking about his brother. He's realizing and he's checking everything off that he's done it because he's done it with his brother. Who's been there with, for him his whole life. Right. And I did find that actually pretty moving. Yeah. And, um, so, you know, I thought that was sweet. But so when you talk about the end not paying off, I, I, I can understand that. But, you know, at the same time, again, I think it was it just coming back to the fact that it was more about the relationship between the two of them than it was the father. I also thought in in the beginning, the, you know, the, they're doing a spell to get the father back and yeah. it k- kind of fails. Barley kind of screws it up and we get only the top, you know, the, 
the pants. Right. His dad, <laughs> that, you pants. know, and again, thinking <laughs> of little kids, I'm like, is that going to be creepy to kids? Like half a person. And then they did some kind of gags with it. Like at one point I'm like, am I watching weekend at Bernie's here? Cause it looked kind of goofy. <laughs> <laughs> you like know, he, they put a, like a scarecrow like at Halloween or something. Right. And <laughs> and it, it just and and they were trying to make some emotional connections with the feet, you know, the way Barley yeah. tapped his he would dad's drum foot. Yeah. I thought you'd appreciate that he drums on the feet. But I didn't it just it didn't hit me um in at an emotional level. And even the br- the checklist was something I thought about because we're so far apart in age. And I always looked at you as almost my kid because um, by the time you came along, <clears throat> mistake. Um, yeah, easy now. Um, by the time you came around, mom and dad, I think we're, we're pretty much tired of raising kids. <laughs> <laughs> and and I found myself kind of spending more time with you than, yeah. you know. Those are some great years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'm still That's paying funny. for it. Well, yeah, it's funny, funny because in the very opening, when Barley comes, you know, when he makes his entrance and there's, I did laugh a little bit because, it, you know, I, I thought about you. <laughs> and I remember I mentioned this not that long ago, but, you know, wrestling down in the basement and, yeah. You know, hey, Dan, let me try out this new pile driver move I just watched on <laughs> WWF. Oh, yeah, that, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> dropping, just... dropping me on my head. <laughs> Needless to say, that was a concrete floor down in the basement. But I didn't drop you on your head. I just did the Undertaker thing where your head was about a foot off the yeah. ground. Meanwhile, I'm Owen Wilson, or Owen Hart, <laughs> rather. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let me just strap you to the ceiling. And I used to pull those gags. See, now there's something. I think about some of the gags I pulled on you because I was older. Right. And I wish they did some of that stuff. Like, I can remember, I was always first. Even though I'm not the oldest brother, we have an older brother. I was pretty much the oldest brother. Right. Because I did everything first. I moved out first. I, you know, did this and that. And then you kind of followed. But... Like, I can remember, I was the first one to get an ATM card. When they first came out, nobody knew what these were. And I said, hey, Dan, I have this cash machine. You know, I can make money. Right. And you were following it, you know. I had you hook, line, and sinker that I could make money. You were also the first to go bankrupt. (laughs) 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 I appreciate you going first on that one. Yeah, that's true. I took Don't I took away. a header on that. But, uh, <laughs> oh, that's good. But you know, um, I don't disagree with you. I mean, I I I agree. I think that I was probably waiting for more of an emotional impact from the film. I I really did. Li- I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Again, I thought the animation is like spectacular, and and the world that they created. Um, I but I agree. Part, I was a little, I, I probably was looking for more of an emotional impact. And, and for a Pixar film, yeah. I mean, they've set a high bar, you know, mm-hmm. when you go to one of these movies and one of the great things about Pixar is you get to bring your kids if you have kids and it's, you enjoy it on a different level than they do. Like I'm, I, I don't think this, I think kids are fine. I thought the, the legs were a little creepy, but after Coco, you know, I guess it isn't so bad. So as far as a kid's movie, I think it's great. I think, you know, the kids love the animation and the wizardry and and the dragon. They have a, a pet dragon. That was very cute. Yeah. Yeah. So I think for kids, everything's there. Mm Mm-hmm. But there was clearly, I mean, there was a huge drop off from week one to week two, like the biggest drop off ever for a Pixar film, like something like 73%. Now you could say, well, it was maybe the pandemic and it could have been because it never opened overseas. It never even got there 
because, uh, you know, the theaters were closed in a co- you know, in two weeks. So it was set for release, but they just, you know, everybody, the whole country, the whole world closed down. Now, did you, I, I'm assuming you knew this, but uh, I wasn't sure. I, I definitely wanted to ask you this, but, um, and we wouldn't know because we didn't see it in the theater, but did you, are you aware of what the uh, little short film was that, that? Yeah. Yeah. The Simpsons. Yeah, about Maggie. Yes. Yeah, Maggie Simpson. And I thought, oh my God, it's perfect for you because you're the yeah. biggest Simpsons fan I know. Yeah, and it's on Disney Plus too. Oh, it, oh okay, but it's what uh, on a separate. Yeah, you'll okay. find it. Uh, it's kind of you know at the he- it's been on the header for a while, but if you go under the Simpsons, they have they're starting to categorize things now, and they have a Simpsons. Now, have you seen it? Yes. Oh, okay. Now, how long is this one of those little... Oh, it's short. It's like, you know, uh, when you go to Disney and see a Pixar yeah, like film a and all... kind of thing. Right. And yeah. all those films are available. Um, you know, I have the... There's three Pixar collections of just short films. Right. It's amazing what they can do in a, in a short amount of time. And this film was one of the longer... Pixar films. It was um, at least uh, an hour forty-five, wasn't it? Uh, it was a uh, yeah. It was just under that. Yeah. So, you know, they usually keep it to a tight uh, ninety minutes, right? And you know, you're satisfied and you're out. And there's also no. They're also known for their songs. And, you know, usually the music is quirky. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. And now are you talking you know, about the score? Or, yes. or you mean like the memorable songs? Right. Throughout? Right. Well, right. The, the, the ending song by Brandy yes. Carlisle is awesome. I, I agree. Carry, carried Me With You. That was great. And she wrote that for the film. That was really nice. I love her voice. Yes. That, that was you know and it came at the you know with people were probably walking out of the theater while it was playing yeah. we always sit there till the end right and and so people probably missed it but that was a nice song but it and even though she wrote it for the film it almost didn't fit the tone it was a great song and i thought yeah this is nice but it's not going to win an academy award like a yeah, like you know, like this Toy Story music or or anything Elton Randy John. Newman does. Yeah, yeah, Randy Newman and Elton John yeah. kind of, you know, they get into the world and the in the songs they write are in the middle, and they're part of the movie. And this so, was clearly like a, an end. Let's take us off. So we we you know you've kind of talked about some of the criticisms. What what were some of the things that stood out to you? As far as what I liked, yeah, what 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 appealed to you? I I did like the the voice acting, all of them. Mm-hmm. I think they were perfect for the the roles, and I think that's what what led to a little of my disappointment is they were just they were fit for these roles, mm-hmm. um, and and I was just a little let down. I thought I didn't like the Julia Louis Dreyfus. You know, her all of a sudden, you know. Oh, and at the end? The callback, you know, to when she was working out. And then <laughs> See, she, I thought that was funny. Know, I am a in. mighty warrior. Right, exactly. <laughs> because that's that what's, you know, what was playing when she was working. I am a mighty warrior. And she's trying to do, you know, right. whatever exercise she was doing. and um, But the animation, I thought, it's typical Pixar, you know, not... I would have expected that. You know, you go in expecting these things. Which, yeah, I mean, I think you're right, which is, I don't know, that's kind of unfortunate because then you almost, you know, you start to to lose a little bit of appreciation for really what you're seeing because some, some of the details are just crazy good. Yeah. You and know? and, and I, I'm not going to bang it on, on that level. So... Even though I, I just didn't emotionally connect. Yeah, I think we were it. both looking for that. It sounds just in talking through it. It sounds like we were both looking for that because 
I think we felt we could have easily related to that theme, but right. Just, and, and I really, I, I really wanted to see the scenes with Ian and his dad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and think about it. It was kind of a stupid um, excursion they took. It really, it was, you know, oh yeah, let's follow this. Let's. And they would just kind of make it up. <laughs> yeah, that must be follow the ravens' faces. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> you know? And, 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 and they were trying to make it like it was part of a board game, and Ian was into the wizardry world. But now, you know, this didn't I, make sense. I liked there was, a, there was some of the, um, the supporting cast, if you will, that I, I – like, I loved Colt Bronco. Right, right. You know, the 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 uh, what is that, Manitar or whatever you call it? Yeah, the that, horse he was really, guy. <laughs> yeah, he was re- he was really funny. Now the, I missed this. I didn't pick up on this when I first watched it. I, I think I actually read about it after the fact. But the controversy, you know, the one scene where Ian and Barley kind of together assume through the spell mm-hmm. Colt Broncos form when they're getting pulled over by the other cops. Yes. Yes. And that whole controversy about the one where she says, yeah, my girlfriend's daughter's got me going crazy and or want get, you know, has me want to pull my hair out of my head. And, and I guess it was banned in some countries because of the really? lesbian. Yeah. The lesbian connotation or, or whatever. So ah, I, that's I was like, okay. Yeah. I mean, I, of course I agree. It's ridiculous, but yeah, but, uh, but I didn't even pick up on that. The first, well, probably because you know I'm yeah not, it didn't occur it anything didn't think like that yeah and it didn't bother you no or, i didn't even know but i i like those characters i thought they were really uh, that and was the a, pixies you know the sprites the sprites yeah, yeah sprite they kind of right yeah they were great. Um, but but see there again i didn't feel like we got enough i thought they were actually gonna have something uh like have a part in the end yes with i help did too in, right but uh, you think they could have been the ones to, um, yeah, assist in that little final right. sequence. Right, get them through the final leg of the journey when it was looks like, you know, they're not going to get across or whatever to, to get to the dad. And There was another scene, a total throwaway scene, but it made me laugh, um, was in the uh, Manticore's Tavern when she's, you know, going back and forth with Ian and, they're trying to get the map from her and everything. Right. And you see those girls in the back that are like trying to get the karaoke <laughs> set up. Right. And right. the one girl, the one girl is like, I'm going to give this a one star Yelp rating. And <laughs> yeah, she's yeah, such yeah. like a Valley girl looking type with the, and you know, and you see her, this was some of the detail I was talking about as you're again, a throwaway line. And then if you continue looking at her in the background, you can see her like going at her iPhone. <laughs> she's clearly right. pulling right. up Yelp and she's, Yelp. I just and reviewing it. And yeah. Reviewing it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tracy Ullman was really funny in that little short sequence um, as the pawn shop owner. That's right. That was a, a you know a short scene, but uh, another. Um, she's got she's got Simpsons right. So because didn't they? Isn't that where they were featured? No. Back yes. In our, yes. Right. Was it okay? Yes. I thought there was Tracy Simpsons Ellman. In yeah, that's where the shorts. That's where the Simpsons began. Okay, that's what I thought. she gave two minutes of her show to them. But yeah, I'm looking, and and it does the score. The average grade got the lowest score, except for Cars Two. Now, what is it on Rotten Tomatoes? Do you know what is? Um, I just know it dropped. It actually has a pretty high Rotten Tomatoes score. Mm-hmm. I know it dropped. I think it's 73%. Mm-hmm. No, that was the drop in the box office from week one to week two. Right. But the Rotten Potatoes, uh, Rotten Tomatoes, <laughs> rotten potatoes. That's, that's my new site. <laughs> that's Go to Rotten Potatoes. You can find us at Rotten Potatoes. And you'll see all my, my personal reviews. That's but funny. yeah, Rotten Tomatoes, it's... You know, I think 77 to 80 at least. Okay. Maybe even a little I'm, higher well, I'm than that. I'm curious to see if it's going to get a second wind at all. Because I, 
It is it is a very sweet film. I mean, actually, you know, I I correct that it's eighty eight percent. Oh, is it really? Okay. So well, there you go. That surprises me. The critics, yeah. average critic review was a seven out of ten. Mm-hmm. So it's above average, and I think if I was to like say on a scale of one to five, I'd probably be in the two point five range, about halfway. Mm because of the letdown issues that I found. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, they've got another big one coming. Soul is their next Disney Pixar release. And that's scheduled for when? It should have been out already. Yeah, well, like I said, some of the film, uh, the theaters rather, at least down here, are starting to slowly, you know, phase reopen and... Yeah, Disney especially. A lot of people were hoping for more Disney Plus releases because they've got Black Widow, they've got Soul, which I just mentioned. Yeah. Um, What else? They've got another one that's already done as well. Well, and I think I think they're going to have to rely on the streaming platforms for a while. I mean, even even if theaters are starting to reopen, there of course they're not going to be near. Uh, the no. capacity that they might have been. So I this think this could, in, you know, they always talk about the theaters are about to die, and yeah. uh, this could be the, the the nail in the coffin. Yeah, well, like I said personally, I'm not. I'm in no rush to 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 go back to the theater. I mean, I do. I will. I do miss the experience. I mean, there is. You know, if the theater. Now, look, we. I don't think neither one of us has been a big fan of a crowded theater ever. No. And, and, you know, people can be so obnoxious these days, but, but, you know, I still there, I still do miss that experience when, you know, if I go like at a matinee or at some, some other time when it's maybe a little less crowded, you know? So yeah, I like to go to the theater. I like to go to the theater when I'm the only one in it. Yeah. Otherwise it's an unpleasant experience. Right. right. I mean, do you have to have a, a tub of popcorn that you could take a bath in? You know, do you need that much popcorn? And, and well, you said it was what an hour 45. So, you know, I mean, you yeah, it's just about right. A large. Yeah. And I think back, you know, when I was younger and this, this was before you had gone to a movie, I swear. And I was thinking about this last night. We went to a movie every single week and it was like a Disney movie every single week. Like, and it was it was a computer who wore tennis shoes, and they ju- it just seemed to have a Disney movie, and, and it was in Burlington, which uh-huh. is a city close by here and north of Boston, and that theater's gone now. But but that's in the days where you used to chuck raisinets at people <laughs> and hit them on the back of the head. And we would do all that silliness. And I think, geez, if we did that today, we'd probably get shot. And uh, it just, the that experience Unless was different. The Rocky Horror Picture Show. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. And it, it, the experience was so different. If it was full, every week it was full. Yeah. And our mother would drop me and usually one of my cousins, uh, she'd drop us off and go shopping or have lunch with one of her sisters. And it was an every week thing. And now even as much as I love movies, I much rather watch them in the comfort of my own home on a 4k. Now that that experience, as long as it's actual 4k, um, that's a tremendous experience. And you know, I, I'm not a big, uh, you're a big movie. You you still used to go to the theater more, way more often than I did. Yeah. Well, like I said, if, if you can find that sweet spot when it's not that crowded, there's, I don't know, there's something, there's something about it. I, for me, I don't think it's so much about, you know, the, the, the reaction from, from other people that are in the theater. Cause I'm like you, I mean, if the theater is empty, I think I can enjoy it just as well, but just that, yeah. You know, just to go into the movies and the gigantic screen, and yes, I'm one of those that likes to get a popcorn, although it might not be like a trough size, but 
still. Yeah, you have to um, hook, put the hooks on your ears. Yeah, like a feed bag. Yeah. But um, we didn't even mention the uh, appearance of John uh, Ratzenberger, who I, has been in every single Pixar film ever made. Has he? Yeah. and he, I know he was in, uh, obviously, the Toy Stories. I didn't yeah, know he, he was in con- all the others. His credit was Constructor Worker Fenwick, which I, I – you know, off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you which what that was, but that one right over my head. Yeah, but he was in there as well. And I'm sure I haven't even looked that close. Well, no, we have to wait ten years for them to double dip when 8K discs come out. <laughs> and Leonard Moulton, of course, will review it. And are love you it. still gonna be uh, hanging on to your discs that tight at that point? You're. I'm not going to have converted you by then. I mean, good. Gosh. No. And I'll tell you. No, oh, bro. I'm more, hey, I'm more convinced than ever that going with the disc versus streaming. No. Brother, that is the way to go. You know, you're such a, I mean, I'm just not a a, a film file, if, if if that's a word, or cinema Video file. file. Video file. file or whatever. Yeah. Uh, to the extent that, you know, like I watched this and it was fantastic. Crisp, clear, like just what I need from the film. I don't, you know, this, this kind of nuance that you're picking up on between the, the physical disc and the, and the streaming, which is a good tease to uh, what I think we've said is going to be our next episode where we're going to oh, talk about. Oh, brother, really? And <laughs> we're going to talk about streaming versus physical media and uh, I, you know, I can probably already see where we're going to land on that. Yeah, one. I don't, I don't think, think we're on the same side. No, I, I, I agree. And just, just the, I know you mentioned this in one of our previous episodes about having whatever two thousand movies still, and that's physical movies, folks. Yes, and Not here's streaming. the worst part. Yeah, you know, how many Disney movies do you think I have? Oh God! I mean, I would just assume you've got every single one of them. That's the correct answer. All of them. Every one, yeah. And, and I had them all on DVD, and then I replaced them all with Blu-ray, and now I'm replacing them all with 4K. I'm an idiot. Uh, no argument there. Hey, hey, there's something we agree on. Oh, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but but that ought to be good. I mean, maybe uh, who knows? Maybe you know that's a that's an opportunity for you to try to pursue. Yeah. But and for you as a Star Wars fan, I'll tell you right now, the 4K Star Wars digital are yeah, not well, 4K. There are a few collections, as you know, that I'm still tried and true with. I will still collect physical media for Star Wars. I have every single one of those. And Yeah, but you New haven't Pacific. watched them. <laughs> well, not You're all. watching the no, digital. That's true. That's true. That's true. But... But, you know, still, I mean, I still own the physical copy and, and like Halloween, that franchise is one. I've got every single one of those. So you don't want to be, you don't want to be bragging about that. (laughs) Oh, come on. You like Halloween. I'm a fan of some of them. Not as big a fan as me, but not as big a fan. That's another episode. So I'm looking forward to that conversation because I, I don't think you could persuade me because just from the mere standpoint of, I don't want to have to store that much crap in my house, you know, and and I've seen yours. It's like, you know, know. you've got it all out in that mobile home of yours (laughs) in the back, (laughs) uh, in the the back. I have a whole room that's just dedicated to movies and it's literally spilled into the next room. Yeah. So, which used to be your room actually. So what's the final verdict on this onward? I mean, like I I said, if, if, we're meeting in the middle almost on this. Yeah, I think I'm down on it more than you. Yeah. But um, I think for kids, great. You know, send your kids to it and go get a drink at, you know, wherever. Go across the street and have dinner while they watch it. But I think for adults, I think this one misses the mark. Yeah, I, I I I take your points on that. Well, well, like you said earlier, where you you know, like cartoons, right? God, I mean, those were made for adults, right? Some of the classic cartoons, the Flintstones, and all that Hanna Barbera stuff. But, and you bring up the Simpsons. I I right. find it 
so funny when I see kids laughing at the Simpsons because they really don't know what the jokes are, but they just love the animation. Yeah, the visual. Yeah, the visual part of it. So, well, there you have it, folks. It's a kind of lukewarm. Uh, although, again, I, you know, I, I think I agree with your your comment there that it's you know it's a wonderful film for for young kids and and adults too, but. It, it's it's still lacking something there with like you said the payoff maybe that emotional payoff that we were both looking for we didn't get yeah uh, but visually you know as you said you kind of come to expect that from Pixar and uh, we'll have to dive deeper into the Disney Plus catalog too and maybe do you know some other releases there because they really yeah. do have like it's it's a very impressive library yeah it um, is. It is. And now there's so many stream. You, the one thing I will give you, well, we'll, we'll save that for the streaming argument, but th- there's more and more popping up almost every day, which yeah. makes me a little nervous too. Like if all my movies were st- on streaming, I'd be a little nervous that, you know, well, that's something we have to talk about all the digital rights management and all that. Sort exactly. Of stuff. So we can, exactly. we can, we can try to nerd out on that a little bit, but uh, and I didn't mention just so people know uh, where to find us. Uh, you know, if you're yes. looking to hit us up on social media, you can find us there. Uh, we're on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and uh, Twitter and Instagram. You can find us at OB Podcast, which is O O H B as in Brother Podcast. Uh, and you know, we're pretty much on all the social media channels and wherever you find podcasts. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this uh, episode. And we look forward to uh, the next one where it's no doubt going to be uh, a heated debate, I would say, because that's something we've talked about for a while. So I'm looking to get into that one. But as uh, for now. So are you officially making the announcement that that's our next? I am. I'm declaring that right okay. now. That's, our, that's right. our next release. So stay tuned for, for that. Streaming versus physical media. I've actually already put out some polls about uh, streaming versus physical media. It's kind of get a a sense of where people are on that. And okay. I hate to report to you, but uh, it's well, it's a well in favor of streaming. And it's, um, it's great for lazy people like you. Yeah. But that, listen, I have three other verified accounts that said a hundred percent favor streaming. <laughs> and so I'm going to take those three people's words for it. All right. For that. So, but yeah, that'll be the next episode uh, of Oh Brother. But for now, I've been your host, Dan Smith, alongside my brother from the same mother, Mike Smith. And this has been the O Brother Podcast. We'll see you again soon. Bye, everyone. Bye.